Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now when we do more concept questions, sometimes we are required to determine the amount of product that is being formed given a certain amount of reactant A and a certain amount of reactant B. Now the first thing we have to determine is which of these reagents or which of these reactants is limiting and which of it is in excess because we cannot assume that the question will always give me exact amounts of A and B that will react completely with each other to give me the products. So the first thing that we have to handle before we answer the question is to determine the limiting reagent. So in this video, we will spend a bit of time to recap the concept of determining limiting reagent in more concept questions. All right, so let's take a look at this very simple exercise. I want to calculate the volume of carbon dioxide evolved at room temperature and pressure RTP when 5.3 gram of anhydrous sodium carbonate. Anhydrous basically means that it doesn't have water. Hydrated means it has water. Anhydrous means there's no water involved. Sodium carbonate reacts with 40.0 cm cube of 2 mol per dm cube of hydrochloric acid. Of course, the first thing we have to handle is the reaction between sodium carbonate and HCl. And this is a very simple reaction between an acid and carbonates. So at secondary level, we do learn before acids plus carbonates will give me salt and carbon dioxide gas and water as the product. So the balance equation would be here, Na2CO3 in a solid state plus 2HCl equals to give me two sodium chloride. This is the salt plus carbon dioxide gas, plus water as the product. Now, as mentioned previously, the first thing that we have to decide is we cannot assume that all the reactants will be completely used up. We have to determine if there's any limiting reagent or if any of the reactants are in excess. So given this mass of sodium carbonate, so therefore we can determine the number of mole of sodium carbonate. And given this volume and concentration of HCl, so that again, we can determine the number of mole of HCl. The first thing we have to decide is which one of them is an excess, which one of them is limiting. So the calculation, actually, it is pretty straightforward. We have this here. The number of mole of sodium carbonate will just be the mass of sodium carbonate in grams over molar mass, mass divided by molar mass. So the molar mass for sodium carbonate, this is 2 sodium, 23.0 times 2. This is for carbon, 12.0. This is for oxygen, 16.0 times 3. So we can work out the number of mole of sodium carbonate. This will be 0 0.05000. Now remember when we answer questions in calculations, what we should do is we should put our intermediate answer to four significant figures, final answer to three significant figures. That is why we have this 0 0.05. 0, 0, 0, round this off to 4 sig fig. Now the number of mole of HCl, which is the solution, will just be the concentration multiplied by the volume. Concentration is in terms of mole per dm cube. Volume is in terms of dm cube. Again, something fairly straightforward. We should be familiar with it. Then the concentration is 2 mole per dm cube multiplied by 40 cm cube, if I convert this to dm cube, will just be 40.0 cm cube divided by 1000 cm cube. So this will work out to be 0 0.08000 number of mole of HCl. Now, once I have the number of mole of both reactants, the next thing we can do is I can determine the limiting reagent. So the technique in order for us to determine limiting reagent is fairly straightforward. If I use up 100% of one of the reactants, how much of the other reactant is required? So usually my practice is I like to use the number of mole of the reactants, which has a smaller number of mole. So in this case, comparing these two, 0 0.05 versus 0 0.08, then I would use 0 0.05. Again, it doesn't really matter which reactant we use. We just use 100% of one of the reactants and we try to determine how much of the other reactant is required. So maybe if we use 100% of sodium carbonate, then the calculation will be here. If I'm using 0 0.05, 0, 0, 0, mole of sodium carbonate, then what is the amount of HCl required? 
based on the mole ratio that we have, this is the balance equation that we have earlier, based on the mole ratio, the number of mole of HCl to sodium carbonate will be 2 is to 1, because the coefficient for HCl in the balance equation is 2, the coefficient for sodium carbonate in the balance equation is 1. So the mole ratio for HCl to sodium carbonate will be 2 is to 1, so the mole ratio will be here. Then the next thing we can determine is, if 100% of sodium carbonate is used up, how much HCl is required? So the number of mole of HCl required will just be 2 divided by 1, multiplied by the number of mole of sodium carbonate, and 100% of sodium carbonate, the number of mole is 0 0.05000. So I put this in, and I do calculation, I can determine the number of mole of HCl required is 0 0.1000. So I need 0 0.1 mole of HCl to completely react with 0 0.05 mole of sodium carbonate, but how much of HCl do I actually have? So if I look back at the calculation, the number of mole of HCl that I have is only 0.08. So do we have enough HCl to completely react with all the carbonate? Actually, we don't, right? Because I only have 0.08 mole of HCl, but I need 0.1 mole of HCl to react with all the sodium carbonate. So what this means is HCl is limiting, sodium carbonate is in excess. So this is the way for us to determine limiting reagent. So the idea of limiting reagent is actually fairly simple. If I have reactant A reacting with reactant B, then if I want to determine who is in excess or who is limiting, I use up 100% of A, I try to determine how much B is required. Then after that, what we do is we compare this against how much B do we actually have. If I have enough B to react with 100% of A, then A, will be limiting, B will be in excess. If I don't have enough B to react with 100% of A, which means that B will be limiting, then A will be in excess. So once we have determined the limiting reagent, then we can move on to determine the amount of the product that's being formed. So I've already determined HCl as the limiting reagent. Then we can look back at the balance equation, the number of mole of carbon dioxide as the product to the number of mole of HCl which is the limiting reagent, the mole ratio this one is to 2. So therefore, the number of mole of CO2 will be half times the number of mole of limiting reagent, HCl. In this case, it will be half times 0 0.08000, which is equals to 0 0.04000. Now the question actually requires us to determine the volume of carbon dioxide at room temperature and pressure. So what we can do is we can just easily multiply the number of mole of carbon dioxide by its molar volume. Now molar volume it is the volume of one mole of that gas at a particular temperature and at a particular pressure. So if it is at RTP, room temperature and pressure, then the molar volume will be 24.0 dm cube. If it is at STP, standard temperature and pressure, then molar volume of a gas will be 22.7 dm cube. So these two values are important. It is good to remember them offhand. So I can substitute the molar volume of this gas at room temperature and pressure, which is 24.0 dm cube, by the number of mole of this gas, 0 0.04000, then the volume will work out to be 0 0.960 dm cube. Alright, so there was the discussion involving determining the limiting reagent for mole concept questions. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.